Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, who is the transparent man dragging his feet outside a glass patio window? Teens debate telling a ghost story to the adults for fear of not being believed. And who are the ghosts that haunt the Lemp Mansion? Those stories and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. It's right on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you love the show, you want to help keep us on the air, well, then become an extra podcast person. We'll give you a whole bunch of extras, a bonus episode every single week, access to all 250, 60 plus of them uh, that are already out there, as well as advanced episodes. You do that at ghostpodcast.com or at uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Carol Hughes joining you once again. Hello. Hello, Tony. <laughs> That was very, uh, very radio esque. Uh, Thank you, Carol. Tony. You never talk radio esque. You're like the. You I really don't, do I? <laughs> you are the least radio esque radio person I know, which is a good thing. Uh, thank you. You. you know, you've never been the hey go weather next. You know that that sort of a deal, and that's that's great because that's always what that's the biggest battle when, when you're in radio. Um, you know, especially if you're like the the program director or something, and you're working with the people. It's like pull that back. Let's talk more like a human being. But you've always just but been, I can't. been a human. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What, what's the, the funniest part is when you have the program director, the boss that is trying to coach you into talking less radio y, and they are the most radio y person on the air. <laughs> I've had that multiple Thanks, times. We, yeah, we yeah. know those people. <laughs> it's, it was like, literally, it sounded like he plugged his nose every time he went on the air. It's like, hey, everybody, coming up after the hour, we got some great hits coming up. It's just like, are you serious? Then you're going to tell me how to talk on the air? Really? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Good times. Ah, well, in other news, my cat's chewing on, kind of chewing on my dog's bone, which is really weird. Is, there, is like, the cat identifying as a dog? I think so. There's nothing wrong with that. That's and fine. you know what? That's okay. I will work my cat through those issues. <laughs> hey, I'll it's be not there a, it's for not every an, step of this journey. It's not an issue. We're just, just embrace it. Let it go. Let it be. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know what? Whatever we have to do. <laughs> I'm going to help you with those. Take the cat to the dog park. Or dog moans, whatever it is. <laughs> It'll work out. It'll work out <laughs> lovely. Uh, just teach it how to bark and we'll be all, that'll be, that'd be exciting. Take the cat to the dog park and the, the cat starts barking. Now that would be exciting. <laughs> that's, that's a YouTube video right there that would get a lot of, uh, a lot of hits. So. The other day I was in the backyard and buddy, like he just has these little chew sticks and they've got like treats on them. That's why the cat's all about it. But buddy had one in the backyard and this crow comes down and took it like it was next to Buddy and the crow comes close. And the next thing you know, I see it flying off with my dog's bone. Crows are they intelligent, really delicious. Crows are they're like little dinosaur birds that are like I've, I've, I've read stuff about like studies that have been done on them. And they're like one of the most intelligent birds there are. Like they, they can like conversate with one another. They can like, I, I don't have it in front of me, but it's just spooky how intelligent they are and how they can communicate with one another. And like the, the deductive reasoning and what manipulation they can do to things is weird. It's like they're kind like of a, there's a delicious bone down there. If, Let's get it. If crows were had about 50 pounds on us, if they were flying around like the size of dogs, we'd all be dead. They would have figured oh, yeah. out how to kill us all and the world would be ruled by crows. So, oh, I believe that. I really do. Because <laughs> crows are the, you know, they're eating something in the road and they're like, what? You go around me. Exactly. They're like, fuck you. We've survived as a species forever. You're all going to kill yourselves pretty soon. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm having lunch. I'll be feasting on your corpse next. And then they just laugh and cackle at you and you kind of shiver and drive away. Cackle. 
So there you go. <laughs> Think about that, kids. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. We'll jump into uh, our first story here. And then after that, I want to talk about another live date that uh, is coming up. The day that this airs uh, will be right after our first appearance uh, at uh, the Crescent Hotel in uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. But I am going to be at another location uh, the 24th, I believe. Let me just take a look at the calendar. Yes, of August. Uh, and I'll tell you where in the world I will be uh, with That's Carmen San Diego uh, in just a moment. Uh, but first, our, uh, our first uh, ghost story. Uh, of the day, which is my uh, guys. My name is Jessica. I'm from Orange, California. The story I have for you today is not mine personally, but my mother-in-law's. Tragically, about one year ago, one of our neighbors took his life in the garage. We live in an apartment complex, and the garage where this man took his life is directly behind our apartment. An essential factor to note is that my mother-in-law and father-in-law sleep in separate beds in the living room. She sleeps in a bed by the door, and my father-in-law in a bed in the long hallway. Weird setup, I know. There's also a large dresser blocking their view from each other. Anyway, fast forward two months. After this man's death one night, my mother-in-law began to hear my father-in-law's bed creak and then someone walking but dragging their feet down the hallway. She figured that it was my father-in-law going to the bathroom. She heard this several times and then a dragging in the feet started leading into the side of where she slept. She was turned to face the other way. She didn't put much thought to it because she thought it was her husband and thought maybe he wasn't feeling too well until she got annoyed by it and she turned and said that she was going to tell him to stop. She turned her uh, blanket covering her head and that's when she saw it. A tall, much taller than her husband, transparent man dragging his feet. He was wearing all white, but it seemed like his clothes were dirty and torn into shreds, and he was barefoot. This didn't, uh, she didn't get to see his face, though. He was walking and dragging his feet up to the glass sliding door and would stop and stare outside for two minutes straight and would continue to walk again. She said this whole thing lasted about 15 minutes. Do you guys think this could be the man who tragically took his life? My mother-in-law has many experiences with the paranormal, and I'm beginning to think that she's sensitive. Another experience she had was when I was working night shifts and my husband used to drive me down to work. We used to ask her if she could watch my then baby daughter until he got back. One night she laid down by my daughter and was on her stomach and her hair was hanging on the edge of the bed. Drifting off, she felt as if someone had pulled her off her hair and ran. She thought it was my husband, but it had only been about five minutes after we left and realized it could not have been him. Plus, it sounded like it was kids feet running away. Another thing to note is that a couple months back, she was renting out the room to a mother and her three kids, and one of her kids had sadly passed away to a brain cancer, but the little kid was known to be mischievous and playful. There are many more experiences like these that my mother-in-law has been through, and I have my fair share of experiences that I'd like to share with you guys in the future, including one with a dark figure, so dark I could see it through the door trying to open it to come into my room. Thank you guys for giving us a space to tell our stories without being judged as crazy. I'm going to say this one, crazy, just completely, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> What's so funny is I, I thought the same thing. Yeah, you're crazy. Just crazy. Moving on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously not crazy, but but that is, it, it's, it's stuff like that. that maybe your mother-in-law is. Yeah, exactly. And problem solved, story resolved. Moving on. Uh, it, it's one of those things where you have those deaths that are surrounding um, that that house and, and, and the mother-in-law. I mean, it's not that she's causing the deaths, but but she's around it. Um, so you do have to wonder, you know, is is it these people who have passed on that are, are causing these things to happen? I don't know so much about the first one being the man who killed himself uh, coming back, but I could totally see the child, the mischievous child being confused and just doing childish things around the house. And maybe that's what was the hair pulling by the bed. I mean, why not the guy who killed himself? Could be. I mean, I, I don't know. For, you know, there's what, something. For whatever and the guy reason, killed I, just, himself. I just didn't. I don't know. I don't know why I felt like it maybe wasn't. I don't know. But I, I felt much more. There was more identifiable properties to the child than the, the other gentleman. And when you only hear that much of the story, like, okay, so a guy died in the house. Then somebody heard footsteps, leg dragging. Uh -huh. So then... If that's what you know about the story, then you go, yeah, mm -hmm. suicidal guy. But there could be something else. 
just because you have those two things happen doesn't necessarily mean they're connected. Exactly. Uh, Seems like they would be connected. But if she has those experiences and has had them throughout her life, could be any number of things. It is. And there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities there. It's easy to assume uh, the answers just because of someone dying nearby. But that's not always um, exactly what it is. So thank you for sharing that, uh, that story with us. Do appreciate it. Yeah, she needs to write back with her own stuff. Yeah, we want to hear that. So please do write back in with that. Coming up on August 24th, I will be uh, with the podcast uh, Hillbilly Horror Stories uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, that's going to be uh, a fun show. We're going to be. Is at, that uh, a ghost story thing, or are you just talking about hillbillies? No, I'm just like, gonna, just rounding up some Haven. just rounding up some hillbillies, and uh, and and we're just going to you know put them into a steakhouse, and we're all just going to tell ghost stories. No, it's <laughs> it's another podcast. In fact, it's uh, it's uh, it's two folks, a husband and wife, team Jerry and Tracy, who actually were listeners to this show uh, to begin with, uh, and they would write in uh, and call in quite a bit, and then they decided to start their own podcast. Podcast, um, several years ago, and it turned out to be a great deal for them too. And they have their own successful podcast uh, that they they do their live dates and everything as well. And it's actually going to be their birthday show um, on August twenty fourth uh, from seven to eleven, Columbia Steakhouse in Lexington. Uh, tickets uh, you can get them. Uh, there's a link on our website at Real Ghost Stories Online. Just go to the was it live. What did I name the link on our website? I, I should... mean, live does seem to make some sense there. <laughs> That would make sense. Uh, da, da, da. Tour dates. Uh, click on tour dates up on the very top of the page, and you will find the link right there. Tickets for that show are $15 a piece and uh, Lexington, Kentucky. So it should be a fun night, 7 That'll to 11. Fun. Yeah, it'll be, we'll do uh, an episode of uh, Real Ghost Stories online, kind of a Q&A type deal, sort of like what I'm going to do with the Crescent, um, where it's in in uh, in the restaurant, in the, the room we're in, uh, everybody's sharing their story and chatting. With all of the hillbillies. Exactly. And uh, and then they're going to do an episode of their show together. Uh, so it'll be a fun night um, for their birthday show. Um, uh, so if you want to go and see me, I'll be in that part of the uh, the country uh, August 24th, which uh, when this is airing, not far away. So uh, do get your tickets. They are limited. Uh, only so many. Uh, so get them before they are gone. Only 15 bucks. So hopefully you can make it out to that if you could not make it uh, to the Crescent the other week. Uh, this will be an opportunity for our uh our East Coasters over in that uh, that area of the country. So there you go. We'll have more dates coming up real soon. I know I wanted to do more of those this year, but I think by the time all is said and done, we'll probably just have the two live ones this year. But uh, I think next year I'm really going to try and get a lot more uh, set up for uh, for going around, which, uh, which should be fun. I even uh, invested in some nice big old... <laughs> It's funny. It took it took me twenty years or more of working in uh, in in media to actually invest in like uh, speakers for an event. I've I've never had like DJ speakers or anything. Um, I would always just like borrow them from somebody. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go do live shows. I should probably buy some good PA speakers. So I did. So uh, so now there you go. I don't have to shout. Congratulations I, on that. I feel special. I can. And the funny thing, by waiting 20 years, the speakers are reduced in size significantly. And they're so much yeah, lighter. You can pack them in your suitcase. Oh, my God. I remember, like, doing weddings and having to, like, carry some of those things, and they were insanely heavy. Now they're and really big. light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I can also uh, DJ uh, Keen Sierras and uh, bar mitzvahs as well. Uh, and we'll play pretty much a lot of uh, like Aaron Neville and uh, Michael, Bolton. Uh, Michael Bolton and some Kenny, Michael McDonald, of Ma- course, Kenny G and little Rod Stewart. So hopefully you like those. We'll have those five artists rotating all night long at your Keen Sierra party. Hope you like it. It'll be a great time. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to our next letter. It says, my name's Cole. I'm a new listener to the podcast. My friend has been telling me to listen to y'all and share my stories with you for a long time, so I think I will. Ever since the event that I'm about to tell you happened to me, I've been very interested in the unknown and the supernatural. My story is long. It begins with a wedding. Not my wedding. My brother, Chris, and his girlfriend, Stephanie, of seven years. They just bought a house together, lived in it for a while, and were ready to take their relationship to the next level. But before they did that, they were going to go on their honeymoon and needed someone to watch their house and their newly adopted puppy, Louie. 
as best man and 17 years old, going on 18-year-old kid in my senior year of high school with an opportunity to have a place of my own, do whatever I wanted to do for two weeks, I humbly offered to house sit for them while they were gone. So the day came, Chris and staff went on their cruise to the Bahamas, and I was given the key to my private residence the next two weeks. I helped them move in when they bought the place and visited a few times, so I've seen and gotten familiar with the house. It was an old house built in the early 1900s. It had tall ceilings, hardwood floors, and every room had old aged feel about it, except for the room that had been added on later that my brother had made his music room where he kept all his instruments, including his guitars, drum set, and electric keyboard. So I settled in and got comfortable. First couple of days seemed perfectly normal, nothing out of the ordinary. I go to school, come back, hang out with Louie, play video games, or watch a movie. One day I came home, sat down with Lou like I usually did and watched a TV show when suddenly the hair on Louie's back stood up as he stood up and stared furiously barking and growling at the corner of the room where a closet door was located. Lou's snarling lasted for at least a minute, then just as suddenly as it came, he was fine again, wagging his tail in happiness like usual. I sat on the couch, puzzled for a while. I've always been a believer of the supernatural, but I've also viewed everything with a high sense of skepticism. So I called it up to Lou, freaking out over nothing. He was new to the family. I didn't know if he was just weird like that. I didn't really know him that long. It still freaked me out. Over the next few days, some strange things would happen, like the TV and the Xbox turning off and on on their own. I tried not to think much of it. One day I was in the kitchen making my dinner, being watched by Louie, hoping to get a scrap of food, when again, the hair on the back stood up of the dog, and he started to growl. He ran back into the living room and started barking viciously. I walked swiftly into the living room after him to find him barking at the same corner of the room where the closet was located. A chill went down my spine as I stared into the corner at nothing. The dog was fiercely barking at. Then again, it suddenly as it came, it went. Lou was fine, like nothing had happened. Apprehensively, I walked to the closet door and opened it. There was nothing in it but empty shelves and my brother's vacuum cleaner. I felt a sense of discomfort as I looked towards the top of the closet to see an access way to what appeared to be an attic, some kind of door on the roof. I never built up enough courage to open it enough uh, to open it to see what was inside. It was then it was beginning to see there was something off about this house. That night I put Lou in his kennel and went to bed like I had done for almost a week now. I lied in bed thinking about what had happened today when I heard a strange sound. Like the sound of a piano key, just one over and over in a slow, slightly off pattern. The sound at last long, only a couple of minutes. I lied there wondering what it could possibly be when it dawned on me. The sound was coming from the direction of my brother's music room where he kept his instruments, one of them being his electric keyboard. The realization paralyzed me. I could not force myself to get up and check out the sound myself to confirm my theory. I lied awake in bed for most of the night with my head under the covers like a child. I started to hear voices outside my window that were muffled. I could not hear what the words were that were being spoken, but the only way I could describe them was as if they were coming from the front porch but were very quiet. I told myself it was the neighbors, and in all fairness, I could have been, it could have been, but it did not sound like it to me. I finally fell asleep eventually. After that, I didn't sleep in that house alone again, except for the night before my brother and his wife returned so I could let them in and make sure everything was exactly the way they left it. I ended up falling asleep on the couch, cuddled up with Louie. Nothing weird happened that night. Next morning was a different story. My brother and his new wife returned in the early morning. Steph went straight to bed and Chris started to get ready for work. It was early and I was terrified, so I lied back on the couch. Every once in a while, I'd open my eyes slightly to see into their room while Chris was getting ready. Chris then exited the room to go into the kitchen to make his coffee, when I noticed something. It was hard to see, but the best I can describe it as was a dark doorway with a darker figure of what looked like a very tall person leaning in the doorway, looking into the living room, into the manifest out of nothing. It sent a chill down my spine and woke me up right away. I stared at the doorway trying to make sense of what I was seeing, thinking it may be my eyes playing tricks on me, but it didn't go away. It even seemed to be moving slightly. Chris came back from the kitchen and walked through the doorway I was staring at, and the figure disappeared before he walked through the threshold, almost as if it was moving out of the way and hiding. 
Chris walked to the left side of the room and turned on the table lamp to finish getting ready. And as he was standing there, I saw a black shadow on the back wall dart from the right side of the room to the side of the room my brother was on. At that moment, I knew I couldn't stay there anymore. I got up, pretending that I was uncomfortable on the couch. I'm going to go ahead and go, I said, trying to act cool like nothing was going on. My brother replied, are you sure you can, can, you can stay if you want? You don't have to leave just because I'm leaving. No, nah, I'm good, I said, as I walked towards the door. And I told my brother what I experienced in his house until a few weeks after they were back. I debated telling him at all so they wouldn't be terrified in their new home together. After I finally told him what happened to me, he thought it was strange and dismissed the idea at first. He later told me about some things that had happened to him that he couldn't quite explain. But I think I'll save that for another time. Thanks for reading my story. I know it was a long one. There's a lot more tales I'd like to share from that house of the experiences of mine. Until then, have a nice day. There you go. House sitting excitement. You said that in such a creepy voice. Have a nice day. <laughs> have a nice day. That, have a nice like, day. That kind of would freak me out. Like you buy that haunted house. Now you're stuck with it. Yeah. Like, because you can't just sell a house immediately or you're going to lose your ass on it. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, uh, and so you wouldn't want to say, oh, yeah, you know, the house you just bought and put in everything you have into this house uh, is kind of haunted. Like, oh, that's horrible. Would you tell if you were in that situation? Would you tell a loved one that their house is haunted as shit if they were unaware Hell, of it? Yes, yet? I would. Okay. <laughs> of course I would. <laughs> Great house. By the way, haunted as shit. Have fun. See you later. It's been a great one. Do you feel that? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> well, my sister, just Kathy, you know her. Yeah. She just moved into a new house. Okay. And so I went there, and it's a nice house. And I'm like, you know, it feels comfortable there. I just hung out for a couple hours. I took my mom there for a few days and left her. And so I come back home. And <laughs> the way you said it was just like, put her up on the side of the road and went along my way to the IHOP. <laughs> okay, well, I stayed a little bit longer than that. But um, so She's Kathy luggage. then tells me, like, the next week she goes, yeah, so I've kind of been seeing something in my house. And she said, I've seen it twice. And she's like, it scared me so much that it made me jump both times. And I'm like, I can never now stay at your house. Like, <laughs> I wish I kind of wish I didn't know that information. Because mm -hmm. how can you ever fall asleep knowing that something could scare you at any moment? Yeah. And I feel bad for her. She just moved in. Like that would suck. Her previous homes that she's been in throughout her life as an adult See, has she, has she that's had what stuff? We're talking about every place she has ever lived has had things happen, and. Seriously, every single place she has lived. Yeah. What I'm wondering about on that is, is this something where it's, you know, she's able to pick up on all these things and is more sensitive than other people, uh, which, which may be a, a big component of this. But is this the same things or are these some of the same things going all the way back to the house you guys grew up in that have never really Maybe. left her side? Could be. They said, "Hey, we like you. We're gonna we're just gonna keep tagging along wherever you go." Yeah. And and Kathy is the one that went back to that house okay. we lived in. Yeah. Which I think is weird. And I told her that too. I'm like, why? Why would you ever do that? And yeah. she goes, "I just couldn't help myself. Like she was so drawn to go back there that she went up and knocked on a total stranger's door." To say, hey, I used to live here. <laughs> what did Can they I look at it? What did they say? They let her in. Did we talk about this part already? Where she came, I went back to it. Think, I, I think we did. Okay. But yeah, so they let her in, and the weird thing was, they were like, no, it's not haunted. It's not haunted. But like, there was crucifixes and crosses everywhere. Okay. And she said there was one wall that was literally covered. She said there had to be like a hundred of them on one wall. Like, who does that? I don't know that we talked I mean, about this part Catholics, of this. Some Catholics, maybe. Yeah. 
But even that's extreme. Yeah, that would be a giant. So well, I guess my question initially is, so she knocks on the door. Hi, I grew up here. You live here now. It was haunted as shit back then. Is it still haunted? I mean, is that how the conversation went? It kind of did. Oh, my God. That's like, that would make me want to shut the door. I haunted thing right off. Okay. I think it went more like, hey, like I used to live here when I was a kid. It's been remodeled. It, do you mind if I look at it? And then as they were looking around, she's like, do you feel like anybody is here? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Now, when I went back after they, because it's been remodeled a few times, like, and I'm not talking just like they put in new flooring. Like, mm -hmm. they totally changed this house. Like, it doesn't look anything like it did when I was a kid yeah. and lived there. Like, I would drive, I actually, when she showed me pictures of it, it didn't even look like, I can't even recognize it as where I lived. Okay. That's how much they've changed the house. Wow. And they've taken porches off and moved porches and like stuff, big, big stuff. But the when I first moved away and I went back the next summer, um, we went over to look at it. And the guy working on it asked me if weird things happened when I lived there. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, sir. Yes. And that's about it. I didn't want to hear it. You know, I was 13. I'm like, I don't yeah. really want to know your scary stories. <laughs> yeah. But the Catholic, like, it, there's no way. I think in all these years, I've driven by it one time. I don't even know if I drove by it. You'd have to. But, I, I wonder yeah. about that. I wonder. Does she have anything, any identifying features on, on these things that she's experienced in the homes over the course of her life to, to give them an identity to go, oh, yes, this is the same one that's been following I don't you forever. Think so. right. I don't think so. Okay. And like some of them, you know, that, um, like my nephew ended up living in an apartment she used to live in and he had stuff happen to him. Okay. So I think that was definitely haunted is still yeah. definitely haunted, but you know, like it's just everywhere she moves, she has something haunted life. I think it's one of those things when you have that sensitivity, you, you can't get away from it because even if the things that you have that were around you are no longer following you, you're just going to naturally run into other. It's like it's like trying to avoid people. You, know? you, you really can't do that. No matter where you go, there's going to at least be a couple somewhere that you're going well, like to run into. The first story today that we were talking about, yeah. that the girl's mother-in-law, <laughs> which maybe is my um, niece-in-law. <laughs> maybe it was Brittany yeah. who wrote it. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> But, um, but you know, that was the same thing with that woman. Yeah. So I just think that there are people that are attracted to people like Kathy mm -hmm. or me. I mean, I have had a lot of weird stuff. Sure. But not like Kathy. No. We need to do another episode about her and her all of the places she lived. It'd be fun. It'd be very interesting to okay, go to I'll that. I'll ask her. And our, uh, our audience, if you want to reference more of that in-depth story, that was on our... That was, that was well, it's further back. Than, Halloween last year was, you're talking about um, the boyfriend that you right. had. Yeah. Um, but you and Kathy would have been like, gosh... That's more than a year ago. Probably a year ago, April or May. Yeah, so yeah, like probably 2018, April or May. Yeah, right around year. there somewhere. Look back on our uh, our archive and you can find it. It was a very very interesting episode. Um so you can uh, check that one up. Uh let's got another story today at 855-853-4802 our phone number. Of course, right in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Uh it says this one happened when I went to a place in Missouri. I do not live there. This was on vacation called Lemp Mansion. If you haven't heard of Lemp Mansion, then you need to do a bit of Googling. Anyway, I was visiting my older sister when she brought me on a tour of the place. The tour was filled with some hilarity, but uh, mainly I just want to share the personal experiences I had. In order to do, to do this, I have to give you a bit of background. We went into the mansion and immediately I noticed that there was so much energy in the building that my hair started to stand on end. The place was at one point a boarding house and a rather shabby one, too. There were tons of deaths that took place in the building, supposedly from cats and dogs to former tenants and even members of the original Lemp family. Our tour guide only wanted to talk about Billy Lemp, but nevertheless, between all of the droning on about their dead love, uh, we branded it love because it was sort of the thing where she talked about that person all the time, but completely denied feelings of them. Billy, she... Uh, 
got some interesting information in. The one thing that she didn't mention very much, though, was of a little baby, an intelligent son, or no, sorry, illegitimate son of Billy Lemp, who had been popularly named Zeke. I didn't believe the baby's name was Zeke, but apparently Betsy did. Zeke was not only what they called a bastard child at that point in time, but he had Down syndrome. During the time period in which the Lemp family died, I believe it was in the mid late 1800s, Down syndrome was unacceptable to people, and people with it were widely discriminated against. We know now that disabilities are acceptable and natural, but again, a time and place of this, it was practically illegal, ashamed of the whole family. So the baby boy was the son of Billy Lemp and one of his maidservants. Billy was a player and had a disability. He was locked in the attic and lived there about eight years until he died. Now, I'll give you details on this at the end of the story because the timing in which I learned these facts is absolutely crucial. We were nearing the end of our tour when we went up to the attic rooms, the two smallest rooms in the mansion. We did what Betsy called a dark room session. Betsy explained how the said dark room was supposed to work. She turns out all the lights and everyone tries to strain their eyes as much as possible to see if they can see a specter or phantom or shadow or mist. Only a third of of which was common. What happened was that we went into one of the attic rooms, supposedly the most haunted of the two. I guess I should say now that it was about nine o'clock. Turned out all the lights in the room, except for a radio clock, which uh, silly Betsy joked around about, although that was helpful because some idiot was liable to shout, I see a blinking red light. I think there's a ghost in here. She said that uh, the lamp child, Zeke, sometimes appears to tender, kind-hearted women. I resent that statement. I believe uh, she meant to say people. So knowing that we were all content to turn out the lights. Now there was some weird stuff going on. A lot of people were pointing out some BS, but that's not what interested me. In the door frame, as well as, uh, as, well as multiple other people, I saw a soft, soft shadow dressed in a long dress. Light, little tiny orbs of light circling her. As soon as someone pointed her out, she jumped out of the doorway until everyone stopped paying attention to her. I could see the frame get lighter and darker as she did so. That alone was also not what interested me the most. It was a feeling, the influence I felt, that was by far the strangest phenomenon. Within 10 to 20 seconds of the lights going out, my legs became increasingly weak. They were shaky and jelly-like, almost as though someone was repeatedly kicking me in the back of the knee, causing it to collapse just enough not to bring me to my knees, but to make it hard to stand. I found my back bending over like I was being pulled towards the floor and looked very much like a monkey. My stepsister actually laughed at me when we left the room. I assure you that these feelings were not of my own. I walked in straight-legged and strong and walked out the same way. In fact, as soon as Betsy said, All right, I'm going to turn the lights back on, the impression dissipated. Afterwards, he went downstairs and everyone was given a pair of dowsing rods to use around the bottom floor of the mansion. I have to say the results were rather interesting, although everyone wanted to talk to Billy. Of course, I, however, chose an old man who was frequently seen sitting in the back corner of the dining room. I know it sounds stupid, but the dowsing rods really worked. Even if I concentrated on one answer, they still pointed to the opposite way. Very crazy stuff. Quite a funny old man. Finally, when we left the mansion, bed and breakfast, whatever you want to call it, I told my sister what really happened in the dark room. She was quite surprised and told me that she actually saw the room where the lamp child lived. She'd been in the mansion in an overnight ghost investigation the previous summer, and one of the carpenters who were working on the remodeling showed her the room in the attic where people usually were not allowed. She said that the room which he lived out of his short life was so small they couldn't stand up all the way and could barely walk. So he was hunched over like a monkey all of his life, thus earning him the nickname Monkey Face. Yes, there was a window in the small room, according to my sister, and it overlooked a relatively busy street in St. Louis. Children would see him looking down from his tiny room and call him rude names. She told me that she could even see ruts where he had walked back and forth for so many years. I attributed this information to my experience. All the information shook me pretty hard. So that's my biggest experience. It was definitely weird, but not scary. I was at peace just weak during those 10 minutes in the dark room. If anyone has any questions, I'd love to hear them uh, or thoughts on this story. So overall, very sad story, a very tragic story of the Lemp Mansion. How do you spell that? Lemp, L-E-M-P. L-E-M-P? Yep. It's, uh... I ain't never gonna go there. 
Yeah, I, it's it's funny because um, I there's there's two versions of Lent Mansion in St. Louis. Um, St. Louis, there is this 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 place that she's talking about, which does ghost tours. I don't know if it's a bed and breakfast anymore or what it is, um, but I know they do tours and such. I had um, some of the curators or investigators on with it uh, on the other show, The Grave Talks, recently, in the last year, and uh, I couldn't tell you the details of the conversation because I, 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 it's been a while since we recorded it, uh, but that's over on The Grave Talks if you want to learn a lot more about the Lep Mansion and get a full hour on it. Um, but I uh, there's also, in this last year, I've had some interaction with the other version of the Lent Mansion, which is a uh, a brewery and a a faux haunted house uh, in Halloween season, um, that is it's all kind of connected in that area. It's two separate businesses, but um, they actually you know they put on the spooky haunted house, and I actually do the voiceover on the commercials for that uh, oh. <laughs> that haunted house. So I could probably finally see if I can find it here. Uh, if I pull well, it up. And I just Googled it. Like, it totally looks like a creepy place. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's an interesting uh, interesting story. I did not go there. I should have gone there when I was in uh, in St. Louis a couple, uh, well, it's been several months now. Uh, but there was stuff going on. I know the the faux one, the, the one that is the, uh, you know, the commercial haunted house, if you will. But I did not visit the actual... Uh, location itself, but I don't know, places Questions like Questions and answers. It says, "Are kids welcome? Very kid friendly." <laughs> like really? What haunted house isn't kid friendly? You know? I don't know. Like I'm fascinated by stories like that. Uh, and homes you can actually tour, and especially now looking at pictures of it, like I, I would definitely do the tour. During the day, I don't want to do a nighttime tour. I don't want to go in the attic, especially yeah. now that I heard that. Here, but it's fascinating. I'm going to read this, about this later. Here's a little uh, clip of the fake one that I did. Uh, Those that practice the occult know that underground, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> Deep below the lamp brewery, cries for help will never be heard. Demonic rituals, the conjuring of demons, and unthinkable witchcraft are just below your feet, deep underground, at House of the Occult. St. Louis's only all-new haunted house at Lemp Brewery. The Lemp Haunted House is now longer, scarier, and more horrific than ever before. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's some of that. That was you? <laughs> that's me, by the way. With some cool effects on your voice? A lot of processing. But yeah, I pitch it down quite a bit, and then, you know, produce all the defects and everything around. So that is like one of those places they just turn into a haunted house. Yeah, yeah it's and it's, then there's the mansion that person tour. Yeah, it's it's one of those where they're they're playing on the the real okay. history um, with you know a fake haunted house. I mean, you can clearly go to the haunted this this one and and have fun and and get scared. But then there's the real one, which is a totally separate business, is not the one you just heard that commercial for. Um, and that's that's the one where they. They do legitimate, you know, ghost investigation type style things. Um, so it can be because I, I was wondering too myself when I when I interviewed the folks. I said, "Are you like how? What's your connection to the haunted house one, like the the commercial one? It's like completely separate? Like okay, cool, whatever." So anyway, good times. So that's a whole story in St. Louis. Then obviously everybody must <laughs> know about it. It is. I believe it's one of the most haunted locations in St. Louis. I mean, if you're there, if you live there, it's it's probably one of those places you grew up hearing about is the old Lemp Mansion. Um, and I've, I, I just think by mere proximity now to St. Louis, where I am, I've been hearing more and more about it from local. Like, have you hear about the Lemp, you know, match? Like, no, I haven't. But I, I have obviously now in the last year or two. So that I, I'm fascinated by that story. A lot of, it's a very interesting uh, family saga that has uh, there's a lot of things with that i'll send you the link to the interview too so you can take a listen okay. um because the thing is about that story too like you know there's so many ghost tours and you know places that you can tour that mm -hmm. are supposedly haunted but you don't normally get an experience like that person got no like my knees gave out i'm turning into monkey boy like lights come on i'm fine yeah 
you know, that is creepy. The most you'll usually get is, you know, oh, I felt the chill or something, you know, yeah. of that nature. It's and rare to... Dowsing, douse, dowsing rods? Is that what it yeah. was? Yeah, dowsing rods. Because aren't those are usually used for looking for water. That's the original purpose, yes, but people and use them. Now you can in... find ghosts with it. Well, that's been that's like one of the original ghost hunting tools. Uh, so that that goes back before EVPs and everything. People use dowsing rods uh, for that when that kind of started to become more and more of a thing. So now you know. Just in case you want to go ghost Shit, hunting. I'm going to be like, I'm going to skip that part. <laughs> Don't take me to the attic or the basement. I can do the rest of it. There's a lot of ghost hunters that, that do not believe in the dowsing rods. Some swear by them as being very accurate. You know, it's kind of to each their own with it when it comes to equipment and stuff. And I'm not a expert in ghost hunting by any means to say this works or that doesn't work. But anyway. And then, like, who's to say? Maybe there is water there. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's uh, it's one of those things. So it's a uh, interesting place with a lot of history. I'm just looking back and uh, the Lent Mansion. Uh, uh, we're on the Grave Talks earlier in the year, I believe it was published. From what I can see, so lots of interesting stories. Okay, about, I got to uh, listen to that about that place. And that'll wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an EPP, an extra podcast person. Ghostpodcast.com or uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get those tickets for the uh, live show with Hillbilly Horror Stories, uh, August 24th, Columbia Steakhouse in Lexington. Uh, go to uh, tour dates at realghoststoriesonline.com. Until next time, Carol Hughes and Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.